So in this video, we're going to talk you through the serratus anterior muscle, an incredibly powerful muscle with some brilliant anatomy to go with it. As well as the clinical anatomy, we're going to guide you through the key exercises we give to help patients with serratus anterior problems. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So everyone, in this video, we're gonna look at the clinical anatomy of the serratus anterior muscle. This is an absolutely fascinating muscle that really does need to be explored. Now, I'm just going to remove the humerus, the clavicle, and the glenohumeral joint as a whole to show you this muscle. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just give you an early orientation into it because it runs from the anterior ribs and then it runs in this gap between the ribs and the scapula, as we can see here. So it then runs through and over the rib cage before it inserts into the medial wall of the scapula. So that's just to give you a foundation of this muscle. So first, let's explore its origin, because this muscle is made up of 10 different fibers and we can see how it almost presents in this fan shape around the ribs of the thorax and effectively these 10 different fibers are said to be grouped into different sections so we have the superior part which originates from the first and second ribs as well as the intercostal fascia and these first three fibers are known as the superior part of the serratus anterior. We then have the middle part consisting of the middle four fibers and we can see that these originate from ribs three, four, five and six. And then finally we have the inferior part, the remaining three fibers which originate from ribs seven to nine with some variables suggesting that there are also attachments to the tenth rib and potentially the external oblique muscle as well. So now in relation to the insertion as we said if we can temporarily remove the spinal column we can see how the fibers run around the thorax in this gap between the rib cage and the scapula in order to insert into the medial border of the scapula as we can see here. It's an absolutely fascinating path that this muscle takes and really shows the intricacies of scapular movement when there is a muscle that runs in between the thorax and the scapula in order to control movement of the scapula. So we can see that the superior fibers attach to the superior aspect of the medial wall. We can see that the middle fibers attach to the middle aspect of the medial wall. And the inferior fibers down here attach to the inferior aspect of the medial wall of the scapula, as well as the inferior angle of the scapula, the pointy aspect that we can all feel when we're palpating it on ourselves. Now, in relation to function, this is where it really gets interesting. So the key functions of the serratus anterior is to act as a protractor of the scapula, which is gonna be incredibly important when we're throwing. And we also typically see this in boxers who have really strong serratus anterior because when they need to punch, they really need to be able to protract their scapula in order to throw that humerus forwards. And you very commonly see this muscle being referred to as the boxers muscle because it's very well defined a lot of the time in boxers. It also is said to have a role in rotating the scapula by rotating the inferior angle laterally, particularly when we elevate the shoulders. And then the other really key role is to stabilize the scapula against the ribs. And for this, if we look at the insertion points for the serratus anterior, and we can see how it runs in that gap, as we said, between the scapula and the ribs, we can see that when this muscle contracts is going to draw the ribs towards the scapula as a part of that protraction process. Now, when we see this come unstuck is when patients have what we call a winged scapula. Now, when you think about a true winged scapula, this comes because of the fact that the 
muscle is supplied by the long thoracic nerve. And if someone has a long thoracic nerve palsy, it means that the muscle will be unable to hold the scapula against the ribs. And as a result, what you tend to see with a winged scapula is where the scapula almost looks like it's separated from the ribs, that it's lifted off the ribs. Now, in many patients, this is actually not a case of a long thoracic nerve palsy. Lots of patients who have some form of hypermobility may present as if they can pr they can really retract their scapula as if it's against as if it's moved away from the rib cage. But we do see long thoracic nerve palsies in head and neck injuries when you see someone who has uh, perhaps something like a stabbing around their neck, very sadly, where it means that that nerve can be cut and therefore doesn't allow it to contribute to the function of serratus anterior and holding it against the rib cage. So we'll quickly mention the blood supply for this muscle, which comes from the superior thoracic artery, as well as the lateral thoracic artery, as well as branches from the thoracodorsal artery. So that's the anatomy. Next, let's talk about exercises. Now, in some patients who might have some kind of rotator cuff tendinopathy, some form of subacromial pain, I sometimes see that their symptoms improve when I help them with protraction and increased rotation of the scapula with a scapular assistance test. If that's the case, it might give me the inclination that I want to try and help them strengthening serratus anterior. So if that's the case, what kind of exercises might we use? So the first exercise here is what I call a one inch punch. We've got our patient lying on a bench with a weight in their hand and their elbow is extended facing up towards the ceiling. From here, the aim is that they are going to lift the weight towards the ceiling, but crucially without bending their elbow. And what this means is that it's purely protraction of the shoulder and scapula that is elevating that weight upwards. Notice how our model here is really keeping his elbow straight when he does this. And this means that it's likely to be pure scapular movement that does it and therefore serratus anterior. This is probably one of the early stage exercises that I might give someone to help them with early control for this muscle. So here you can see this second exercise, which almost looks like a little bit of a punching motion with the TheraBand. Now, as we mentioned previously, when we think about serratus anterior as a boxer's muscle, it's because of that forward reach that's required for protraction that the serratus anterior gives. And therefore, this could be a progressionable exercise that I might use in order to help further strengthen serratus anterior, where the real focus is in the protraction element of the arm as the shoulder moves forwards. So then we have this final exercise referred to as the push-up plus. What you can see here is a model performing a regular push-up, but immediately afterwards at the top of the movement performing the additional plus movement, where you can see the thorax lifting a little bit further because this requires additional protraction of the scapula, which therefore naturally is going to utilize serratus anterior. The key in this is the quality of that plus movement. So do spend time with your patient making sure that they perform their normal push-up but then really focus on that additional plus movement for serratus anterior. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got brilliant additional resources on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio with loads to learn for physiotherapists. And we've got our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com, where we have loads of brilliant anatomy if you want more on this, where we have the shoulder anatomy bootcamp, taking you through the bones, the soft tissue, the muscles, the nerve supply and blood supply for the shoulder. Link for the membership in the description below. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.